you know, the theme for tonight is no regrets. You know, live in 2022 with no regrets. And that's a that's a tall order. Like if we want to accomplish all that we're meant to accomplish this year, we can't we can't leave anything on the field. Right. We got to leave, leave everything on the field. We can't we can't just sit on the sideline. Right. We got to We got to get engaged. Right. And uh, don't you want to end this year knowing that you did everything that you could possibly do for the Lord and just know that, you know, that's that's a tall order. Right. But if we position ourselves in our hearts that way, you know, man, with him, all things are possible. Amen. We just got to say yes to him. So we're going to focus on uh, biblical evangelism. You know, our, the whole ministry is, is based on seek to save the lost. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And he poured into his disciples. He, he, they watched him in the last several months. All we've been looking at, looking at Jesus. What did he do? How did he live? How did he reach people? You know, uh, what did they observe? We didn't really focus on so much of what he taught, but what did they see, right? And then in Matthew 10, he sends them. After they've watched him, after they've spent time with them, he sent them. He gave them authority to do great things, and then they went out there and did them. But they didn't do that without watching him first. It wasn't classroom setting, right? It was life with him, watching him do what God had called him to do. And he was pouring into them. So that's what we focused in on. And so ultimately what we want to do is, is become the hands and feet of Jesus every day, everywhere we go, right? Engaged culture, the way Jesus engaged culture, the way they watched him engage culture, the way he trained them, and then look at what he did, allow his words to change us, right? Change our hearts, change our minds and say, look, I need to be like him. If I'm going to witness to my coworker, I want to witness like he did, right? I want to do what he did. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. That's what Paul said, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. <clears throat> and then after we do that, that could be six weeks, just talking about that, right? Because we will engage. I know I will. We will engage in outreach. <laughs> you know, we will provide. Not everybody has to do that. I understand that. But we want to provide the opportunities to get involved in this kind of stuff. We have uh, uh, Mardi Gras coming up, you know, that, that, that's kind of crazy. Who goes out there and, and, and tells people about Jesus on Mardi Gras? <laughs> He's like, I, I can't wait, I can't wait. Uh, uh, that's coming up, uh, but usually people go out there and party and they don't even consider the things. That's, we live in a culture where people don't even think about the things of God. And it is up to us to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the earth, to make Christ relevant in a world that doesn't even think about it right? That's our job as the church. It's our job when we're on our, in, in our families, uh, when we're on the job and, uh, and all that. We, we are the ones to bring up the conversation, and we want to teach you how to do that. Not only just teach you, but listen, let's go do it. Yeah, let's go do it, right? Um, and then after that, we want to focus on doctrine. You know, doctrine's important. You know, uh, this is, you know the grow meeting, this is, this, is, this is where we can grow so that we can know and then we can give away what God is teaching us and showing us as we reach people, right? I think about the vision of, of uh, you know, we want to we reach lost people. We want to inspire the church to do the same. We want to equip them to do it, right? That's one side of it. But also just in our own personal lives and when we think about the send, really it's we want to know him and make him known. And as we make, as we know him and make him known, and those who we make him known to, they begin to know him so that they in turn can make him known, <laughs> you know, and this is all the, de the, the depth of a relationship of, of, of under, of, of getting intimate with the, with the spiritual side of his word, of making it alive in our hearts so that when we walk everywhere we walk, we carry the message of the gospel. We carry the kingdom of heaven with us. Amen. And that's just knowing him, knowing Sound doctrine, and, and, and uh, you know, we're going to focus on Hebrews chapter 6 and, 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 and looking at some of that and, and other things. Um, and then, like I said, in the middle of it, we're going to do outreaches and things like that. So um, that's a tall order, you know, and I think I don't want to leave anything on the, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to leave anything on the table in 2022. You know, it's up to us. It's a, it's a choice that we all make. And like, what are we going to leave on the table? You know, are we going to engage? Are we going to say yes to this, like be all in? Or are we going to be like, ah, maybe, maybe not? You know, like there's that battle that goes inside of us. It's real and it's true. Believe me, I'm speaking from experience, you know. Anybody relate? 
And you're like, I don't feel like doing it today. Well, people are dying and going to hell, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not in the mood. You know, the, you're, we're, he was all in. He set his face like a flint to do what he did, and he accomplished everything, everything he was supposed to accomplish in 33 years. I'm 40, I'm going to be 43 this year. And he did it all. He fulfilled it, right? Obviously, he's God <laughs> in the flesh. He was sold out to what he was called to do, right? And, and we we're called to be, follow his example. And then also, um, we have a vodcast. You know, uh, you guys all know that. If you, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, do so. It, share, comment. We're trying to, you know, trying to grow slowly but surely. It's not never a, a something that happens overnight, but um, uh, trying to, you know, have a thumbprint in the digital age. We live in a digital age. Like people are watching this at their house right now on their cell phone. You know, it's pretty cool. That's a digital, like, you know, just imagine we start, you know, in, having more and more engaging conversations on our podcast and pray for us that we do continue to have those. Um, so let's just talk about uh, uh, tonight's focus. Um, it, it's dealing with no regrets. Um, life can be full of regrets. Anybody have any? I don't want to bring those up, but, you know, you have regrets. I know I've had several in my life, and, and, and I have not, not uh, successfully um, accomplished everything my heart set out to accomplish, but I'm still alive. You're still here, right? We can do this, right? There is an opportunity for us to accomplish that which God has called us to accomplish. You know, um, the world has regrets, not just Christians. You know, we, we can look at, oh, I should be reading my Bible more, and I'm not reading my Bible more, or I should be doing this. Why? Yeah, but even the world, the world has regrets. So this is a common thing. I remember I was talking to Mia earlier today, and, and I just, we were talking about this, and I remember uh, watching an interview with Dennis Rodman. You guys remember Dennis Rodman from the, the, the Bill, the Buffalo, no, Chicago Bulls, my gosh. They haven't been in the playoffs or done anything since Jordan, really, you know. Um, but I just remember him talking about some of the sin that he was engaged in. And as a total lost person, he just, he told the interview, he says, like, why did I do that? Like, I just remember him expressing regret for what he, for the conduct, like this life that everybody wants, and he's living this sin, life full of sin, and everybody thinks that's what you should be doing, right? That's the, that's the life right there, money, fame, you know, sin, and he's and he himself is sitting there going, "Why did I do that?" You know. We all experience that, but we can. I'm telling you, in Christ, we don't have to experience that, especially in sin. We got to walk away from that stuff, right? But we want to fulfill that which God has called us to fulfill, and for that, we can't just sit around. You know, we have to move forward in this. You know, we could look back at even successes that we've had. Successes. And, okay, you're successful, praise God, but that was yesterday. Or you're sitting on success right now. That's right now, that's fine. But, you know, and we're going to look at this scripture here in a little bit, but the Apostle Paul had success, and he counted it all dung. It was all dung for Christ. For Christ. So today and a new year is, is an opportunity for us to hit reset, right, and just say, God, here I am, here's my life. And I don't want to leave anything on the, on the table, God. I'm, I'm laying it all out on the field. I want to give 2022 as a life of no regrets. So a couple weeks ago, uh, we looked at this scripture. Um, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off some things that hinder us. It says, everything that hinders us right and it adds the sin that so easily entangles us sometimes we like we said a couple weeks ago we focus on the sin side we don't focus on the things that everything else distractions you know uh i've been listening i I cleaned out the back room the other the other day and and the sand here looks pretty good i mean my gosh it needed to be done <laughs> but it took all day long and i listened to a lot of youtube teachings while i'm doing it i'm cleaning i'm listening so i got my you know your your you ever get your screen your screen time notifications 
And they said I was up 37% <laughs> from, la from the year weeks before. So because I watched so much more on my phone, listen to it. I guess it records on my phone as though I'm watching it, you know, but I'm, I was working. But up 37%, and it just hit me. Like, we spent a lot of time just on the phone. And I'm like, man, what if I spent that much time just in this book, you know, or, or going after the things of God, you know, and, and that's, so that's for me, you know, that's for me. It might not be for you, that's for me, okay? And I just know that I want to change some things in my life. I was, it was good things I was listening to, but there you go. It's the everything else that hinders us. The things that don't seem to be so much of an issue, right? But what are we spending our time doing and, and not focused on the kingdom of God, focusing on the things of God? That's something that we should analyze and look at our own lives and hearts and, and see how are we spending our time. And of course, sin, right? You see, what I do affects those around me. What I do. It affects me, but also affects those around me, right? And what you do affects you, and, and it affects those around you, right? No matter, those, those can be good decisions, they can be bad decisions. But what's going to matter with what we do and how we live our lives is when we stand before God. That's what matters. So what we do in this year is what we do and how we spend our time going to matter in light of eternity. That's where I want us, our hearts to be. See, when temptations come, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 tells us there's a way out of this, right? We can walk. We don't have to do this. We can walk. We know that God has provided us a way out. So we don't have to get entangled in sin that so easily entangles. That's a choice. It's a personal choice. And like I said, you know, this is a new year, right? New start. Uh, we look at a new day. Like today's a new day. Praise God. And, and I want to read out of Lamentations, not in, my, not in the notes uh, on the screen, but Lamentations 3.22 and 23 says, the steadfast love of God never ceases. Never. Everybody say never. Never ceases. But his mercies, no, 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 no but there. His mercies never come to an end. Isn't that wonderful? His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. And then it closes this verse by saying, great is your faithfulness. Great is His faithfulness. It's not my faithfulness. It's His faithfulness. And I'm so desperate for His mercy. I'm so desperate for that love that never ceases. And it's in that place that causes me to want to be faithful, you know? It causes me to want to say, okay, if nobody else is going to go out there and reach people for Jesus, I'm going to go because His mercy is so great in my life, you know? I know what He saved me from. So we don't want to, we want to throw off all this stuff that so easily entangles us and, and, and the sin, you know, because there's a reason for that. At the end of that verse, it says, and, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Perseverance. We've talked about that briefly. That in and of itself is an enduring thing, isn't it? You know, if I wanted to start a, 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 to run a marathon right now, if I were to start right now, like, hey, Nick, let's go run a marathon. Let's go right now. Ain't going to happen. Is <laughs> no, but persevering training and, and, and staying at it and consistent and persevering when, when hard things come against us, there's going to be a time when we can actually do this, right? But we got to do this. We got to get off the couch, right? We got to, we got to move. We got to, we got to go forward. You know, if we're going to fulfill the things of God, the race that is marked out for us, we got to run this. It's going to require perseverance on our part. It's going to require looking at the end goal and saying, God, I got to do all that you've called me to do. It's not going to be easy, but I'm going to go after it because I can do it with you. I can do all things through Christ <laughs> who gives me strength, whether I have plenty or I have, or, or I have little, right? I can do it in him. He is my strength. Because listen, there is a race marked out for you. There is a purpose. There is a calling. There is a purpose and a race marked out for me. And I know, and I recognize that doing this thing, I just can't hope that it happens sitting on the couch. <laughs> you know, we're not sitting in this room because we were sitting on the couch, you know? We, we, we look at what God has done and he rewards those who go after him, right? And 
I just want to go after him. Not for the rewards. He is my reward, right? I want to stand before him and know that I've done it all, you know? So here's a big what if. Who likes the what if questions? Don't give me any what ifs. Don't give me hypotheticals. But seriously, let's think about this for a moment. You guys made it through 2021. Here we are. Man, Betty White, almost. (laughs) Almost. 99 years old. Wait, was it New Year's Eve? Man, that's so close. And her birthday's my kid's birthday, right? January 17th. So she would have been 100. Anyways, but we made it. We made it. We're here. We made it through 2020, 2019. Here we are, 2022. What if you knew, what if I knew that this was the last year that we're going to ever live this year? That everything that we do, doesn't matter what happened in 2021, doesn't matter what happened in 2022, I mean 2020, doesn't matter. That what happens this year is the only thing that matters. What if that was the year, what, what we do right now is what, we're, what we stand before God on? I mean, it's, I know it's not necessarily, it's just a thought, okay? It's just a thought. How will we live? How would you live? How, how do I live, right? In, 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 in reality of that question. As I was pondering it, you know, I, I remember the story that uh, in, in Luke chapter 20 or chapter 12, um, you know, these, these people were arguing about an inheritance. You guys heard me talk about this maybe in the past. And uh, they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus was like, who made me judge over you guys? <laughs> and then he tells a story about a man who was a, a successful businessman who, who had a lot of grain. And he said, well, what am I going to do with all this grain? I'm going to tear, I'll tell you what, I'm going to tear down the barns that I have. And I'm going to build new barns. And I'm going to stuff all my new grain in those barns. And then I'm going to live like... You know, I have nothing to worry about until I go, right? That's how I'm going to live my life. And then Jesus said, and the God said to him, you fool. Your life will be demanded of you. I mean, just think about that for a second. It doesn't matter what you have, what you've accumulated. If this is all we have, will we be called a fool? Will I be called a fool? The way we live our life, what we focus on in life. Does that make sense? I heard of a, a church leader Man, I can't, it was, it's, it's, I cannot remember the name of this guy. I want to say it was Jonathan Edwards, but don't quote me on that because I'm not sure if that's him, <laughs> but I want to say it was him. But the question came up, it was like, if you're going to die tomorrow, how would you, would you do anything different? You know, just, you know, think about that. If you're asked that question, you just analyze your own life, would you do anything different? I could say I'd probably do something diff- some things differently if I knew that. But he, he said I wouldn't do anything different. He said, I wake up in the morning, read my Bible, spend my time with the Lord. I'd go to the local city square and university, wherever he would go, and I'd preach open air, <laughs> just go try to reach people. I had my dinner after that, my lunch after that, and then I would go in fellowship with fellow believers that evening in prayer and worship. And then I'd go see my Savior. He said, I wouldn't change anything. Right? I mean, but I, when I think of that and I look at that model, it's like, man, I'm not even there. <laughs> like, I want to be there, right? I, I mean, I, I, I get into the Word, I pray, but, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not out there witnessing as much as I want to be. So there's things that we could change. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what, are we, what could we do different? But he said, I wouldn't do anything different. Wouldn't it be cool to have such confidence? Anybody there? <laughs> Nobody's there, right? But there, there, see, there, you know, when Paul said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ, he's like, and he says, take note of those Philippians. Take note of those who live like we do. Like there's examples that are, God has put out there for us to look at, right? People who live like this, and, and we don't worship them. We don't look at, we just look at their life and we say, man, that is a man who I know loves Jesus who I know has sold out everything that he could possibly has, given his whole entire life to reach people for Christ and to expand the kingdom. Man, I want to be like that guy, right? Those are who we look to, right? We can't look to those who don't live like that. Look, look to people like that, you know? So we look at people who, who do and say such things. And I believe he did that not with arrogance. He did that with humility. Why? Because he was so grateful. For what God has done for him, his life was no longer his. It belonged to Christ, and he meant it. So what if, 
What if what you do this year, what I do this year is the only thing that mattered? What would you do? How would you live? What if? Now, this isn't a salvation issue, of, of course. Not a salvation issue. But the question is, I mean, some of us, do we even care? That's a question. Do I care? Of course we do, right? Well, how do we do this? And, and this is some basic stuff, but it's, it's you know, the basics are the, the heartbeat of it all. And I camp in this, in this chapter. I live in this chapter. I love this chapter. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says, for it's Christ's love that compels. Someone like that church leader, you know, like I think of Ray Comfort, you know, he's in, he's in his 70s, and he's still out there witnessing to people. What causes him to do that? He could retire. Man, he sold like 50 books. You know, he's world famous, right? He doesn't need the money. You know, he can, he can go get in a boat and, and sail all around the world right now with what he's done, you know, financially. I'm sure he can do that, no problem. But he chooses to grab a phone, plug a microphone into it, <laughs> and go ask people, what do you think happens when you die? Why? Because he's, he's in love with his Savior. He's one of those guys that I just, I look at, and I'm like, oh, man, that guy. You know, he's not in it for anything but pleasing the Father. Why? Because his love compels. He knows that Christ's love compels him. I know that about the man. And he said this, he says, meditate much on the cross because that's where you will see the love of God. Think about it. The wretch that I am and what he's done for me. Now he's given me purpose and, and drive and, and zeal, God, for his kingdom. All the, all the storms that come, don't even hold weight to the power of the love of God in light of the cross. And that's what causes us to overcome because of his love. His love compels us. Amen? And then look what he goes on to say. He says, why does his love compel us? He says, because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And that he died for all that those who live should no longer live for who? themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. This is their life. This is the devotion of their life. They lived for him. He lived for him. I want to live for him no matter what comes against us. We go all out for him. So what I want to do is in your Bibles today, if you guys would open it up to Philippians chapter 3. I just want to read these, was that 13 verses or so? You know, when I think about, you know, re-hitting reset and, and uh, you know, where the Apostle Paul was, where his heartbeat was, I always come back to these scriptures, these verses, because I need them in my life to propel me into the thing that God has for us. Looking at his example. All right. Verse 4. Actually, I'm going to start in verse 2. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship in this, by the Spirit of God, who glorify, who glory in Christ Jesus, who put no confidence in the flesh, Though I myself have reason to put confidence. So right here in verse 4, he says, I have reason to put confidence in my flesh. Okay? It's kind of like this self-righteous thing that he's, he's dealing here. He says, if anyone thinks else thinks he has reason to put confidence, confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee. As for zeal, man, you think, you think, there, zealous, listen, I was persecuting the church. And as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. I mean, this guy was crossing every T and dotting every I, and he was proud of it. And he could literally say, test me. Right? He says, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. So look what he just did right there is he listed accomplishments. Like, you can survey my life. 
you know, if you're a Jew looking at me, I was darn near flawless. And he says, and even in that, whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I might be that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, a righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship and the sharing of his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. Now, who talks like that? <laughs> you know, like I want to know him. Everything that I've ever accomplished in this life is rubbish. I want to know him. And he goes on to verse 12. He says, not that I have already obtained this. Or have I already been made perfect? But this is so powerful. He says, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Man, and the question is sometimes we've got to ask ourselves is, has Christ Jesus taken hold of us? Has he taken hold of you to get you to even think or process this way? You know, I want to press. I want to I want to take hold of him. His brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do is forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I don't care about what happened in 2020. I don't care about what happened in 2021. I don't care about what happened, you know, just on, on 2021 or 2020 this first week. I want to go after him. That's what he's saying. I want to go on. I want to press on. Forgetting what is behind and straightening towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So this is this, there's this mentality of leaving it all behind and going after him unashamed. Just going after him. And then he, he goes on in verse 15. He says, all of us who are mature. Say mature. Everybody say mature. Mature. If we are mature, he said, you should take such a view of things these things you should take this, this same view those who are mature should look at life like this and if at some point you think differently that too god will make clear to you this is a powerful verse he says only let us live up to what we have already attained he said we're already there in christ we've already attained it we are there now let's just live like it <laughs> god in his mercy and his grace with the blood of, uh, that was shed on the cross Ephesians chapter 2, he says, by his mercy, he, man, he put us up with Jesus in heavenly places, not by anything that you've done, but by his mercy, right? And, uh, Titus says the same thing. Man, thank you, God, for that, right? He sets us with him, right? Now we just, it's like, now there's a place of, now just live like worthy of what you've already attained. Maturity will enable us to get the heart to live this way. And then he goes on in verse 17. He says, join others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according, according to the pattern that we set for you. So what he's saying, man, listen, <laughs> you got to have this heart. Go after him. Have this heart, right? Forget everything that was to your profit. Forget, leave it behind. Go after him. Do what I'm doing. If you are mature, you will think the same way that I'm telling you right now. It's like, God, help me think this way. <laughs> you know, help me think this way. I want to live this life. I don't want to just be this casual Christian that checks a box and, and thank you, God, for his grace. And I'm thankful. And I don't want to add. You can't add anything. But it's the, the grace of God that provokes us. It's the love of God that compels us to live differently. I got this for Christmas. Get used to different. Get used to different. We want to live differently. This is the chosen, the show that shows you guys watching the chosen show. It's powerful. We don't live normal lives. We live differently. We live as Paul, you know, uh, 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 the example. That's the example that we look to. Right. See, forgetting what is behind. 
There can be good things. Like we said, Paul was an achiever. And everything that was, was to his success, he counted as, as dung for the sake of Christ. As rubbish. I mean, come on. That's a place to come in your life, isn't it? To look at all the accolades, all the achievements, all the, all the degrees on the wall, all the books that you've read, all the books that you wrote, and say, that's garbage. That's, that, that's what he's saying. <laughs> because of Christ, He wrecked me. He said, that was garbage. But some of us don't have those accomplishments. We have some, maybe. But maybe it's just the failures, shortcomings, and sin. You know, the Bible says that He will give beauty for ashes. If we give Him the ashes of our life, He turns it into beauty. Come on, right? That's what we're after. That's the power of the Gospel. He, he made Him who had no sin, sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of Christ, that we may become the beauty, the ashes that He, that he throws away. He turned it into beauty because not what we've done, but because of what He has done. There is repentance required in this. Unfortunately, you've got to change. Jesus didn't say stay the way you are. He said change. To the woman caught in the act of adultery, He saved her life. They were about to stone her. Just according to the law of Moses, that was justifiable. That was the sentence. And Jesus says, you who is without sin cast the first stone and everybody leaves because everybody has sin. And he says, where are they that condemn you? They're not here. She's like, no. And he goes, well, neither do I condemn you. Now carry on as you were, all were. Is that what he said? Go ahead and go ahead and c- keep committing adultery. That's okay. He didn't say that. He said, go and sin no more. Now the reality that would cause her to, what would cause her to actually live that life is to understand the depth of what he just saved her from. <laughs> you know, if we understand the, the, the depth of hell, and what God has saved us from, that should provoke us into a life change. You know? Stop flirting with that stuff. Run from it, right? Because of what He saved us from. He saved her from an absolute brutal death. The only way He could do that is because He paid for it on the cross. God is unjust. Why would He let people who do bad things go free? Because He paid for it. He didn't. He paid for it. Apologetic right there. But it does require repentance. Don't don't do it anymore. Surround yourself with different things. Surround yourself with light. Surround yourself with people of God. Surround yourself in the things of God. It's important. Live differently. Don't do these things anymore. God will work it all out. You guys with me? So, what I want to do tonight, where's, where's Isaac? Is he, he's in with the kids. Uh, this is a little thing that we want to do. Um, it'll take about five minutes, ten minutes. Scripture says, but one thing I do is forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. And I just want us to take some time and process this. What I want you to do is I want you to write a letter to yourself. Give you an envelope. I want you to, I want you to uh, address it to yourself. Put your name on it. Put your address on it. And in six months from now, we're going to send it to you. But what I want you to think about here for the moment is what do you want to leave behind? Or let me, let me say it this way. What do you need to leave behind? Achievements? As Paul said, it's all done to me. Or how about shortcomings? And then what I want you to look at is what do you think that God is calling you to do? What are you straining toward? Straining is this word, it's, it's like you're going after it. You're, you're going after this thing. You're not, you're not just casually 
hoping that something happens. No, this is something that God has called me to do, and I'm going to do that. Paul was like, I'm going to bring the gospel to the, to the Gentiles. <laughs> you know, I, this is what I'm after. I'm gonna, I want to do this, right? What is that in your life? What is that in your heart? Maybe it's to, to get closer with God. Maybe it's to read your Bible more, or maybe to read your Bible for the first time all the way through. Maybe you're going to do that this year. Maybe it's to get closer with your family, closer to your wife, closer to your husband, God, and to develop these godly relationships. Maybe it's to be a better employee or, or to be a better employer. Or maybe it's, it's to be a witness for Christ. You might be here and say, you know, I have never shared the gospel with somebody. Like legitimately shared the gospel from cradle to grave. I've never done that. You know what? I'm going to do that this year. I'm not going to just do it once. I'm going to do it a bunch. (laughs) You know, maybe this is what you want to go after. See, Paul, he he wanted to please God. He made it his aim to please Him. 2 Corinthians 5, he says, with the fear of the Lord, he said, we try to persuade men. Like, I'm trying to go after the lost. What do you want to do? Maybe it's you want to serve the Lord in in a new way. Obviously, this is a, a spiritual type of devotion before, the, your, your, before Christ. Or maybe it's a financial goal, a physical goal, whatever. You know, you can add those in there. But write a letter to yourself. Take some time. I'm going to play a little bit of music. I'll give you guys about 10 minutes. And then we'll close up, okay? Is that cool? All right. Just towards the end of Paul's life, he's writing his spiritual son, Timothy. He's lived a life, man, a full life in Christ. It says in verse 6 of 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, For I'm already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time has come for my departure. So he knew this was the end. And he goes on to say, he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. He goes on to say, he says, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord the judge the righteous judge will award me on that day and not only to me but also to all who have belonged who have longed for his appearing I don't know about you, but I know at the end of my life, I just want to be like Paul who says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That is so personal, isn't it? Let's load our hearts and our lives. Be positioned in 2022 to say I've done everything that I know I can do. Let's bow our hearts before him. Father, we don't want to leave any regrets in this life that you've given us, Lord, the life on which you purchased with your blood. Lord, we want to we want to give it all to you. Every part, every fiber, every inkling of who we are, God, is yours. Holy Spirit, help us, guide us, show us what it is, Father, that you desire for us to do, Lord. We want to please you. Lord, we know that your word says that you came to seek and to save the lost and that you commissioned your church to to make disciples of all nations. And, And Lord, I pray, Father, that you just show us, Father, 
your perfect will, your plan, God, for this ministry and for the churches in this area, God, that we wouldn't do it, God, for anything else but for your glory. That we can say, as the Apostle Paul said, that we have fought the fight. We've finished that race, that race that causes us to persevere, this race that's set out before us, this calling that's set out before us, God. You put it in front of us, God, and it's going to be obstacles, there's going to be storms, there's going to be all that. But in you, Father, we can do all things, God, because you are our strength. Lord, and we sit here and we declare that we need you. Lord, that we cannot do this without you, God. I need you. I'm desperate for you. And Holy Spirit, God, we want to abide in you. Your word in us. That we might bear the fruit, God, that you've called us to bear demonstrating and showing that we are Your disciples, God. Teach us, Holy Spirit. Help us live this life with no regrets. Lord, we give You this year. It is Yours. We give it to You, God. The good and the bad. bad. God, we give it to You, Father. We submit it to You, God. We don't understand sometimes. We don't understand what's going on, but God, but we trust You and we know that You do, Father, and that You will direct our paths. Lord, we yield to You. Spirit of God, have Your way. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.